Hey guys, Tom itself here. About two and a half months ago, I made a very technical video comparing the Stinger and Igla anti-air launchers. And for two and a half months, it's been one of my most commented videos. I do read all the comments. And a lot of those aren't necessarily Stinger versus Igla, but more about the anti-air balance in Battlefield 4 in general. So I thought I'd make a commentary on the topic. And it's kind of crazy because, well, you're not going to make everybody happy. You're probably not even going to make anybody happy. That's just the way this whole mess goes. But let's go ahead and talk about it. The first point of contention is player expectations. How effective should these vehicles be that respawn in your base for you? Battlefield has quite the range here. You've got things like the main battle tank that has an advantage over pretty much everything else on the battlefield. And then you've got things like the Jeep, which is mostly just for moving around quickly. Okay, it's got the gun, but it's really not that great. You don't hop in a Jeep and expect to have the same kind of defense and offensive firepower that a tank has. That's just the way Battlefield works. Some might argue that vehicles should just be an alternative playstyle, and you shouldn't expect to have a higher KD, score per minute, or greater influence on the outcome of the game just because you're in a vehicle. But that's not really Battlefield's philosophy at all, is it? Instead, they go for the counters, where one vehicle counters another, or some infantry gadget like the launchers counters a vehicle, that sort of thing. There is a general emphasis on making the vehicles more effective counters than the infantry gadget's counterparts. It's not surprising to see a jet go double-digit KDs against tanks and IFVs because it's supposed to be able to do that. As an engineer with rockets, you're not going to be able to do that. So when we have a vehicle, the mobile anti-air, that is supposed to be able to take out other vehicles in the air, and it goes double-digit KDs against those, well, that's not surprising at all either, is it? In fact, I'd say that's DICE design, or DICE karma for you. When it comes to infantry balance, we expect guns to have strengths and weaknesses, and in general, for some classes to do better in some categories than others. If the guns are good, we generally just won't use them and pick the ones that are, or suit our playstyles. The opportunity is there for everyone to have the same gun, if that's what they choose. Vehicles are something like power weapons. You have a limited supply, and you try to make the best use of what you've got. But it's really hard to put a finger on where it seems like DICE is trying to put that balance. I'm not sure DICE knows where they're going. We saw lots of changes through Battlefield 3 to this stuff, and we saw more changes from 3 to 4. Okay, at this point, a bunch of people are probably furiously typing away comments related to skill. So let's go ahead and talk about skill. One of the very intentional design decisions DICE made for Battlefield 4 was that the easier a launcher was to use, the less damage it should do. But guess what? Even the easiest launcher to use still has to be effective. Otherwise, that shit is useless. You can talk about details like the opportunity cost of carrying one launcher over the other, limited launcher ammo, not being able to rely on teammates so that one soldier has to be able to get the job done even if it takes him multiple lives, but in the end it really comes down to if it's not effective at getting the job done, what is it doing in the game? It needs to be taken out or changed. If the answer to which launcher should I be using just come down to, well, how good are you at this game and how good is the person you're trying to shoot at, is that really good game design? We could talk about flattening the skill curve. It's something that's necessary in casual games like Battlefield because there isn't skill-based matchmaking. You have to make it possible for even pretty bad players to do something useful. And we're not talking about gun-on-gun -gun here, we're talking about taking a gadget that's supposed to be a hard counter to something. But those skill comments are still coming, aren't they? I could talk about counters until I'm blue in the face, but it wouldn't matter. So instead, let's switch over to some Battlefield 3 gameplay. I've talked about counterplay before. I did a fairly lengthy video on counterplay of Call of Duty killstreaks, but let's talk about counterplay in Battlefield. Counterplay is the idea that it shouldn't just be fun or interesting to use something in a game, a gun, a vehicle. It should be interesting to have it used on you. It should create game dynamics that are fun for both players. Now, it's fun to fly around in a helicopter and shoot stuff on the ground, but it's not quite as much fun for the guys on the ground. Infantry on the ground can try to take cover, they can try to shoot the pilot out, they can even try and get a lucky hit on it with a dumb fire launcher. But in the end, it comes down to, actually, you probably want a hard counter to that helicopter if it's being terribly effective, and so you take out an AA launcher. And the counterplay goes downhill really fast. It's not fun standing out in the open, waiting to announce your presence to the pilot by trying to lock onto his helicopter. It also isn't very interesting holding the lock on with the launcher, hoping the pilot will accidentally fire his flares prematurely, and you can save one of those rockets. And of course for the pilot, it's not any fun just waiting for the tone to start beeping, to push the button and then fly away and wait for the flares to recharge. It might have gotten just a little bit better in Battlefield 4 with the introduction of telling the pilot or driver where they were being locked from, though I still have mixed opinions on that. 
The counterplay in this entire system isn't very interesting or fun, but for some reason in Battlefield 3, DICE made a jet mission where you basically play both sides of this at the same time, and it's god-awful. All you're doing is waiting for the higher pitched beeps to tell you when to deploy flares while trying to lock onto the enemies just by looking at them and once you get the lock you fire the missiles. That's all there is to it. You're not flying the plane here. You can't really move around, you just gotta basically go on the ride. Why haven't they automated the flares? You always fire them if you have them if a missile is incoming, otherwise you just gotta wait. Maybe it could be something to build tension if you were otherwise busy, but it's mostly just annoying here. I guess what I'm getting at here is that it doesn't seem like Battlefield has a clear vision for how its game mechanics should work, it's part of the player expectations, and how they should be fun. They've gone to this design idea that which launcher you choose determines your maximum effectiveness, which is really lame, and you're guessing, hey, do I think I feel lucky today in terms of getting hits with RPGs, or should I actually just pull out the stinger? We've got things like the law. Super fast, not a lot of ballistic drop, doesn't do a lot of damage but locks on in flight. Really easy to use but doesn't do a lot of damage. And okay, sure, but we could make this so much more interesting if it was actually a really slow launcher and it gave a cone of warning to drivers and pilots a little bit ahead of it so they could try to get out of the way and then leading it would be more interesting. Why not? Why is it just the noob weapon right now? This isn't interesting. Active protection isn't just the best countermeasure, it's also a stupid game of red light, green light. You can't always see the light, and it doesn't provide any feedback to the users of the projectiles that it destroyed. Knowing when to use countermeasures like smoke or flares relies on those tones, which are notoriously unreliable in Battlefield 4. And then the actual countermeasures, not that reliable. I'm not sure how much of that is intentional, or just how much of it's bugs. Or because the missile will often keep going in the same direction, maybe it just goes right through and hits your target anyway. I think some of the folks at DICE need to be forced to play this mission repeatedly until they understand why it's so bad, and then maybe they can work on improving the game. I think we'd see a whole lot less complaining about skill if the counterplay was actually fun. Well guys, enough for that rant. Sorry about that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.